Hi, so in this video, we are going to try to fix a network issue where we cannot get an IP address due to a missing MAC address. So right now we are booted into Windows and as you can see in the network connectivity, it says there is no network access. And if we go into details, we can see that there is no valid IP address there is only in the auto configured IP address. The IP address we are supposed to get here is uh, 192.168.1. something, and we are not getting it. The reason for that is that the DHCP server is uh, not handling our request because our request contains an invalid MAC address, which is full of zeros here. So the problem here is that the MAC address that's supposed to be stored inside the Ethernet controller, in this case, is missing, because in fact, on this board, we replaced the Ethernet controller because it was uh, shorted, and the new Ethernet controller came unprogrammed. It didn't have any MAC address set into it, so uh, what we need to do now is to actually program the correct MAC address that was originally uh, set with this board onto the new chip. So just as a side note, if we can't get the correct MAC address here in, uh, by default, what you can do is go inside the device manager and then you click on the network adapters section, click on the network adapter that has a problem, go into advanced, and then in the network address field, and here you can fill in some network address that is valid. So we're gonna fill in something. So FAFD BBDC257B, okay. And now, if we go back into the network interface, you can see that we have IPv4 and IPv6 connectivity. And into details, we can see that the Felix equal address is now the address we set just before. And we indeed got a valid IPv4 address, 192.168.1.61. So everything is fine. So. Uh, Let's revert back to no first MAC address and we are going to try to fix the problem. So we are going to confirm inside the BIOS that the MAC address isn't set. Let's go into the BIOS. Okay, so let's go into settings, advanced, and real tech PCIe. And as you can see, the MAC address is full of zeros, right? So. Okay, so this board has a real tech uh, RTL 8111E. Ethernet controller. Uh, this procedure will apply to most of the Realtek controllers from the 8168 and 8111 series. And uh, this controller have an internal uh, one-time programmable ROM, which is uh, composed of uh, effuses, and uh, it must be programmed with the correct uh, MAC address because uh, from factory it comes with, uh, with an empty MAC address. In some cases this uh, this controller may use uh, an external uh, EEP ROM but uh, it's pretty rare. You know that's not uh, the case here but uh, the procedure will be uh, very similar if it was an external EEP ROM we would still use the same tool, just with a different switch that I'm going to show you a bit later. So in order to program 
the Mac OS, we must use the PG8168 tool. So it's kind of difficult to find because it's not intended for the end user. But uh, fortunately, uh, Lenovo has a driver package on their website that you can see here that actually contains the tool we are interested in. So we are going to download it. Uh, not this one, the executable. And this executable is in fact a self-extracting archive. Uh, it's made for Windows, but uh, we are running on uh, Linux right now, so we are going to use uh, Wine to run this executable. So here we are, we are going to install this package and uh, the default location, that's fine, yes, install, ok, so it was extracted to our OneDrive, uh, Drive C, Drivers, Win, Landos, so that's what it contains, and uh, what we are interested in is this tool, PG8168. So this is uh, DOS tool that will be used to program the Ethernet controller. So since it's a DOS tool, we must run it from DOS, and uh, we are going to create a free DOS boot drive with this executable on it. So we are going to create a free DOS bootable USB drive. So let's go download the FreeDOS. So we want to download the light USB. So let's save that. Okay, let's open it. So we are going to extract the image. Wherever. So we need now to transfer FD12 light to a USB drive. So let's use the DD command. Uh, so the input file is the FD12 light image. And the output file is going to be our USB drive. Of course, you have to make sure it's the correct one. Here it's a dev SDA, but uh, in your case, it might be different. We can uh, make sure that it's the correct one by using fdisk to show the partition table and uh, this is a 256 megabyte um, USB drive so that's what we are dealing with on dev SDA so that's good. Okay, uh, random block size, synchronize when it's finished and show progress. Let's go. So the image is getting copied to the USB drive. That's fine. And now we are going to take a look at what got installed. So we got a bunch of things. And in fact, uh, in this image, it's a 30 megabyte image, and there is only 100 kilobytes left. So we are going to just delete some uh, stuff. We don't need to install FreeDOS itself, so we can remove the packages that are supposed to get installed because we don't want to install it. We will only use the bootable drive to have a DOS environment, so let's remove the packages. So it's going to free up a lot of space. See, now we have 29 megabytes. So now that we free built up a lot of space, we are going to copy the files we extracted earlier, so in my case it was on the one attitude drive C drivers win Landos, ok, let's copy everything, let's paste it here, so we got our bootable drive with the PG8168 uh, executable, so let's plug it into the computer and the boot into it, so let's reboot so 
and go into the boot menu by pressing F11 on this board. to the USB drive. So Fridos is booting. Uh, it will keep it in English and we don't want to install it so let's select no there. Okay. So we are on our USB drive and the C uh, letter. So as you can see we got our 8168 files and we got our G8168 executable so we are gonna use this executable and you can take a look at the available commands so you can see a bunch of stuff on what we are interested in uh, is that it says the defection will be to write the EEPROM or the EFUSE according to the configuration file we don't want that so never run the tool itself without giving a parameter what we want to do is on the next page so let's press enter on the, this page in fact we have the slash vmac command that will be used to display some id in particular the mac id of our, our controller so we are going to use that uh, right no so we have the vmac parameter as you can see we got our rtl 8168e uh, right now it used the external eprom and uh, we can also tell it to use the one time programmable ROM inside it uh, by using the EFUSE parameter. So, if we do that, you can see that it's also blank. So, we are gonna set this MAC address. If we take a look at the help uh, once again, you can see that you can use the slash node ID parameter to program the MAC address. So, that's what we are gonna use right now and if you don't have the MAC address you can often find it on the sticker on the board so in my case it's uh, on the ports on the back of the board we have a sticker with the MAC address and so we are gonna use the node ID parameter with the MAC address okay and uh, let's run it so it didn't work uh, to write to the from so we are gonna try to write it to the ifuse instead so let's use the ifuse switch okay so we wrote the mac address to the ifuse in fact uh, in this board i don't think we have uh, an external eprom so you can't write to this external eprom but anyway we wrote it to the internal one time programmable one and if we check again with the if you use the vmac command you can see that the mac address is now set properly so what you want to do now is to power off the machine turn off the psu unplug it and make sure everything is discharged and turn it on again because we want to make sure the ethernet controller gets rebooted and we need to unplug all power for that to happen So we turn on the PSU and we are going to turn it back on. Okay, we got our Realtek controller and as you can see, it has the correct Mac address right now. So let's go into the boot menu. So 
So let's boot into IPv4 uh, PXC UEFI mode. Okay, so it got an IP address. It's downloading the bootloader. The bootloader has been downloaded successfully. So it seems like it's uh, working as it should. So let's try to boot into Windows, which is this drive. So let's check our network settings. So if we check the details now inside the network uh, status, we can see that we got our MAC address. So it's what we entered just earlier. We got an IP address. And of course, we didn't set a MAC address manually. So we just confirm that. And so network adapters the real tag adapter. I'm going to advanced and network address and you can see that we selected not present. So the MAC address isn't set manually. This is what the Ethernet controller set by itself. So it's working as intended.